This is a 2008 Sax X-Road 125cc single cylinder motorcycle that I've bought and done up for my daughter. Um, my daughter did fantastically well in her exams and I said to her, what do you want as a prize? And she said, I want to do my CBT. And I thought, well, okay, fair enough. If you're going to do the CBT, we'll sort out a bike. Turned out it was impossible to get a 50cc bike. She's only 16. Um, and I bought this purely by serendipity. And it has had two lady owners and has spent most of its life in either a garage or a barn. Um, when I took possession of it, it needed a lot of work to bring it back into line. But most of that work was cleaning uh, and replacing the battery. Now Sachs is a German manufacturer and is supposedly the oldest motorcycle manufacturer in the world. But I don't think there's anything German on this bike at all. Um, the frame I know is made in China and there's lots of complaints about the quality of the welding. Although I couldn't see anything wrong with the welding, the quality of the paint is poor. The brakes are Brembo, so that's Italian. And the engine on this one, because this is a later model, is Motor Marini. Um, and I was quite impressed to have a Motor Marini engine. When I was young I always wanted a Motor Marini 3.5 and, and I could never afford it. The earlier ones have Suzuki 125 engines in, which um, apparently don't have as much power but are probably more reliable. The gauge is uh, very low key, um, but it does a trip, have a trip computer and a fuel gauge, which surprised me. And it is relatively accurate. I fitted a rev counter, and this is one of those that you buy to put on lawn mowers and chainsaws, because I don't like having a bike without a rev counter. For a 125, it's quite tall, and the saddle height is actually higher than my BMW, even though they're both on their stands at the moment. And the saddle is remarkably comfortable, even two up. It's got dinky little modern fittings, tiny little LED style, but not LED indicators. I really love the routing of the exhaust pipe, where it goes up through the middle, down through the middle of the body, it makes it a really attractive looking bike. And also it's something you're less likely to prang when you do fall off it. The bike has a self-retracting stand, which I really hate because it's really powerful and if you knock against it, it goes up and the bike will fall over and it's actually quite hard to put back. The bike itself is pretty light. I think it's weighing in at 125 kilos, but it does mean that you can actually get hold of it and pick it up off the ground, off the back wheel, which means you can move it around quite easily. Um, that beast weighs 220 kilos. You can't do that with that. It's got a plastic petrol tank. A lot of the electronics are exposed and this leads to lots of complaints about it packing up in the wet, which you can imagine. Um, this bike hasn't been out in the wet for years, but uh, it still needed to be quite assiduously cleaned. Um, it runs really nicely, so I'm just going to start it up. It is electric start, but it is still a bit old school. You have to turn on the fuel tap. Um, which is actually quite hard to get at because it's under there and I've replaced it and put a new one in So you turn that and You have to let it percolate through for a little while Turn it on Now it has got a choke choke assembly here. It's really probably far too hot for the choke now the bike hasn't been started for weeks and weeks, so I'm going to see what happens. The electric start. The most of that noise was sucking the fuel through because it was empty. Now you can hear it's ticking over. Um, here you see the exhaust. It's really lovely and quiet. It's much quieter than my bike. What I have found though is you have to leave it to stand, to let it run for a couple of minutes before you decide to ride away. Otherwise it will drag and stall on you. It's trying to find its level at the moment. Now the rev counter, the rev counter shows it doing 8 to 10. Now, 
in the garage they told me I was setting this up wrong and that should be reading twice that but there's no way that's doing 1400 RPM at that speed. I'm going to let it run for a while and then I'm going to give it a ride while it's running up. Just take a look at that fat back tyre, that super large tyre. It's actually bigger than that on my BMW. Um, it's all pose value of course, it isn't going to improve the performance of a little 125, but it does look cool. These bikes are really nice looking and there are very few of them about. If you try to buy one, then they're always restored and they want quite a lot of money for them. When they came out, they were expensive. Um, I saw um, them list price at 4200 This is in the year 2008 when you could go out and buy a really decent bike for at least half of that and you could buy a really nice Aprilia for about 2200 So they didn't sell well. Um, they had to drop the price. They dropped the price down to the 2000 bracket. And to be honest, the only reason this one got bought because the lady who bought it originally, she wanted a Ducati Multistrada. Unfortunately, she hadn't done her CBT and she didn't have a test, uh, but they sold her this instead. Not quite the same thing, but nice looking bit of kit uh, and quite gentle. So it's half past four on a Wednesday in July in the UK and it seems that every dirt brain in their car is out on the road. We live in the country in a effectively a cut through and everyone's decided to use that cut through. So maybe I'll save the uh, road test for another day. They're usually pretty tedious anyway. <laughs> 